By far the most common type of foundation here in the south is slab on grade and there's really two varieties of that. There's post tension slabs, that's where you have a cable that runs through the slab, there's not rebar in there and those cables are tensioned at the outside of the slab edges later so the slab is in compression. That's not my favorite type of foundation. What we're doing here today is I think the best type of slab on grade. This is a steel reinforced slab. Let me back up a minute and tell you how we got to where we are today. The first step after we've designed the architecture is to get a structural engineer involved. The structural engineer is gonna hire a geotechnical engineer who's gonna actually do a boring in the soil here and tell us what kind of ground is underneath us. Now, if we're on rock, we're in really good shape. There's not a lot of uh, additional steps for reinforcement needed. But in this case, our soil below us had a high plasticity index, meaning there is some clay soil that may experience some up and down movement on this house in the future. So we had to design a very stiff slab that would resist that soil movement. The yellow plastic you see behind me is the vapor barrier for this house. This is called Stego Wrap. This comes in a 10 and a 15 mil variety, and I really like this for the vapor barrier. The vapor barrier is important because any moisture that's in the soil, we wanna make sure that's kept off of the slab as much as possible. So this vapor barrier is doing that job for us. This one is particularly tough and durable, and they make a great seam tape, which is this red tape here. So as we overlap that, we can really make sure that moisture is not gonna make its way to, it, to the slab. So now when you look at that yellow vapor barrier there, you can see that there's channels cut in a grid pattern through that. Those channels are what is gonna add the stiffness to the slab. Ultimately, those are gonna get filled with a grid pattern of both rebar and concrete. And that grid is gonna make this super stiff slab so that now as my soil exerts pressure on one part of the slab, the whole slab is gonna move as one unit, just like a boat rocking on the seas. That's really the best type of slab on grade, especially if you've got bad soil. After the rebar has been placed and tied, I wanna give you a couple of other special details we did. We used a fine wire mesh on top of all that rebar, similar to what you'd use if you were pouring a driveway. And that fine mesh really locks around the concrete and prevents those little cracks that you see often on concrete slabs. You'll also notice on all the plumbing pipes and anywhere we had a corner or an angle on this foundation, we laid some rebar on a 45 degree angle. That's gonna help prevent those cracks from happening at those locations. And finally, where the plumbing penetrations are in the slab, we've wrapped those with a termi mesh. That's a fine stainless steel mesh, which prevents the termites from tunneling up at those locations. That's a lifetime termite treatment for a house like this. Okay, so next, pour day. That is a really fun day to watch. We had about a dozen concrete guys from Booth Concrete out here. They did a great job placing this slab. We had 100 yards of concrete. We had a boom truck. It was really a fun day. You also notice on the outside of the slab, we have hold downs. Those are called J bolts, and those are placed during the concrete pour. We also have several in-bed plates on this project. There's a lot of red iron to take a massive cantilever that's happening on this project. And those also need to be placed just prior to finishing the slab. After all that's done, we came in and power troweled the entire slab to get the perfect finish we were looking for. And then at the end of the day, before we wrapped up, we covered the entire slab with some black plastic. That's gonna prevent that evaporation from happening too quickly. And it's really gonna give us that fine finish with as few cracks as possible. Now this is wintertime conditions, so we could really just cover this for five or six days and not have to do anything else. But if it was summertime, we'd really wanna flood the slab on a continual basis, either with an intermittent sprinkler or with a guy in a hose for at least four or five, maybe even a week's time to make sure the slab really has all the water it needs and gives us that fine finish we're looking for. 